From being the wonder of Latin America in the 1980s to the wreckage it is now, we speak about Caracas, the capital of Venezuela, where the socialist revolution first promised equality and the eradication of the bourgeoisie. Venezuela is a prime example of the dangers of turning into a petro state because it has the greatest oil reserves in the world. Since oil was discovered in Venezuela in the 1920s, the country has experienced an exciting but risky boom and bust journey that can serve as a model for other resource-rich states. What was once one of the Latin America's most successful nations has fallen into political and economic devastation due to the decades of bad leadership. There is much to learn about what or who is to blame for Venezuela's socio-economical collapse so, stay with us. Chapter 1. Geography Venezuela is a country close to the northernmost tip of South America. It encompasses a virtually triangular area, larger than the combined areas of Germany and France. The borders of Venezuela are the following. The Caribbean Sea and Atlantic Ocean to the north, Brazil to the south, Colombia to the southwest and west, and Guyana to the east. The tropical climate of Venezuela is hot and muggy. However, it gets more temperate in the highlands. The capital, Caracas, experiences tropical savanna weather. In the arid zones, 400 millimeters of precipitation falls annually, whereas in the Venezuelan Amazon, 4,000 millimeters. The average yearly temperature is between 24 and 27 degrees Celsius. Venezuela's landscape, which includes tall mountains, tropical forests, broad river plains, and arid coastal plains, offers a range of natural habitats in addition to several challenges to social cohesion and economic development. The capital of Venezuela, Caracas, serves as the primary center for commerce, manufacturing, tourism, and education. Chapter 2. Venezuela, a Petrostate Case the Venezuelan economy is based mostly on the extraction and utilization of petroleum. From the late 1940s until 1970, the country was the world's leading exporter of petroleum, and it has long been one of the U.S.'s main suppliers of oil. The nation's economy has relied on the earnings of the petroleum industry to modernize and diversify other economic sectors, exploiting vast amounts of coal, nickel, iron ore, and bauxite, or aluminum ore, in addition to hydroelectric power, significantly expanded the economy. However, the economy was challenged due to abrupt fluctuations in the price of petroleum on a global scale. The 1980s and 1990s global economic crisis, as well as domestic problems including inflation, poor management, fraud, and a lack of skilled labor, the economy was strained by massive foreign debt, high levels of unemployment, rapid population growth, and illegal immigration. Yet, it recovered enough in the early years of the 21st century to pay off the country's foreign debt by 2007. Since oil accounts for 95% of Venezuela's exports and 25% of its GDP, rising oil prices boost the national economy. Between 2006 up until the early half of 2014, oil prices mostly stayed between $100 and $125 per barrel, with one exception of a brief drop in late 2008 amid a worldwide financial crisis. Venezuela took advantage of the chance to exert influence over politics and finance its budget by using the funds it obtained from the oil price soaring. The oil giveaway program began to lessen its benefits to the Venezuelan economy near the end of 2014 as a result of the decline in oil prices. Venezuela has been sending away over 200,000 barrels of oil per day, half of which ended up in Cuba, so it was selling less oil for profit than it actually extracted. When oil prices were over $100, Venezuela's revenue from exports was adequate to offset the volume reduction without having a detrimental effect on the national economy. When oil dropped drastically under the price point, the country's earnings were stretched to the point where they could not pay its expenditures, which resulted in soaring debt. Chapter 3. Inflation in Venezuela The Nicolas Maduro-led government, in power in Venezuela since 2013, declared a state of emergency in 2016. In the same year, the rate of inflation hit 800%. 
The state of affairs has gotten terrible ever since. Venezuela is thought to be $150 billion or more in debt. The rate of annual inflation shot up to little over 130% in 2018. It still stands at 234% in 2022. This fiscal situation serves as the foundation for the current political crisis in Venezuela, despite the fact that the issue has existed for decades. Furthermore, a severe economic downturn is coinciding with the COVID-19 outbreak in Venezuela. The GDP has been steadily falling since 2014, in contrast to 3.26 million barrels per day the year before. Less than a million barrels of oil were produced every day in 2019. Chapter 4. Poverty rates are skyrocketing. Vladimir Lenin once mentioned, the best way to ruin a country is to debauch its currency. In the last few decades, Venezuela has been reduced to a socio-economic wasteland. The economy is in chaos as a result of the absurd hyperinflation of the Venezuelan currency and the government has not taken any significant action to assist. The nation's social framework has suffered as an outcome. There is no time for growth or enjoyment. Therefore, finding food has become particularly an important problem facing Venezuelans. The administration of Venezuela was under growing criticism during Nicolas Maduro's leadership. The National Survey of Living Conditions, ENCOVI, 2019 to 2020 published studies that show how, since 2014, the labor market, education, and fundamental infrastructure have all worsened. The UN estimated that approximately 7 million Venezuelans, or 25% of the country's total population, were in dire need of emergency assistance in the same year that ENCOVI reported an astounding 96% of the country's people lived under the poverty line. 90% of the population is thought to live without consistent power and the availability of both water and electricity. Chapter 5. Corruption is the root of all catastrophes. Currently in charge of Venezuela is Nicolas Maduro whose despotic government has shattered peace. The president of Venezuela is not supported by the people and is not recognized as such by the US or other surrounding countries. Maduro's widespread incarceration and corruption have instilled fear in the minds of Venezuelans, enabling him to maintain power. Under Maduro's 10-year presidency, the nation has gone through its worst economic crisis. Maduro put price controls in place to try and help the economic crisis, but this really made it harder to get by and made poverty in Venezuela worse. Because of several successive governments, the repercussions of corruption are visible throughout Venezuela and have been for a considerable amount of time. According to one investigation, a state-owned company that imported powdered milk was discovered to be bringing it into Colombia illegally, even though there was a more than 90% shortage of the commodity nationwide. Trafficking operations involved in the participation of Venezuelan and Colombian customs personnel as well as the troops. Considering the magnitude of its political and economic breakdown over the past 10 years, Venezuela will find it particularly challenging to diversify its economy. Before it could grow and create other significant sectors, the nation probably needs to revive its oil industry. However, this would require a significant investment, which experts claim would be difficult to come by given Venezuela's fragile political climate, trends in the country's oil consumption, and growing concerns about climate change. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe button to receive more content. See you in the next video.